Good morning and assalamu alaikum. My name is Laudi Nehmet and I have been selected from amongst my group members to analyze our group's objective. Our outcome aims to analyze the causes and consequences of waterborne diseases. Subsequently, we will also educate and raise awareness about their prevention. Waterborne diseases are illnesses that are caused by pathogenic microorganisms and are transmitted through contaminated water. These microorganisms include viruses, bacteria, fungi, and many others. When water sources are contaminated by sewage and fecal matter and other pollutants and are ingested by humans, they cause a number of diseases. This is an example of an event where waterborne diseases were considered a huge threat and highly fatal was in the 2023 Sialkot floods, where the floods caused a number of diseases including acute watery diarrhea, skin diseases, typhoid, and many others. Due to these diseases, approximately 600,000 people died as they did, were forced to drink contaminated water as they didn't have source of clean water. It is due to such an occurrence we have deemed it our ultimate responsibility and foremost priority to raise awareness against these waterborne diseases. Before proceeding any further, it is of paramount importance that we learn the link between water sanitation and waterborne diseases. Although as vital as it is to have improved medical facilities to combat such diseases, the main breach is the poor water sanitation in nations like Pakistan. Therefore, through a more targeted approach to improving water sanitation, can one achieve absolute prevention of waterborne diseases? The sad reality of our country is that only 36% of Pakistan's population has access to clean, safe drinking water. We have decided to conduct pH tests of various water resources that are being ingested regularly by the citizens of Pakistan. The different varieties of water we have are the following. Soft water, which contains a low amount of calcium carbonate. Filter water, in which impurities are removed by physical and chemical processes. Uh, tap water in which water is directly obtained from tap and contains impurities and finally mineral water in which there is a high amount of minerals and gases. pH of drinkable water is from 6.5 to 8.5 and now we will be testing four different kinds of water to know if they are drinkable or not. This proves that tap water contains high amounts of disease causing pathogenic organisms that affect specifically the poor whom rely on these sources of water. Uh, I am Arbuka and I am teaching to O level and A level classes since last 23 years. And my subject is geography and environmental management and I have, I have worked on water sustainability along with the MPhil students of GCU. How have the government policies improved the water sanitation conditions in Pakistan specifically? The government is playing, uh, just paying a lot of attention to improve the water sanitation in Pakistan, provide uh, filtration plants and uh, uh, awareness among people in, at provincial level and uh, national level and FATA and other areas. Government is providing assistance to NGOs, the people in public, to the public health department. Specifically, I have seen many filtration plants in many areas of Pakistan, specifically for drinking water. Uh, and uh, some other things are also being done by the government. So waste, hospital waste, industrial waste, strict, strict implementation of policies is being introduced by the government to, to, to recycle the industrial waste, to re recycle the sewerage waste and uh, hospital waste in specifically. Uh, to save the people from waterborne diseases. In your opinion, what is out of these ways, what is the best one to move to, towards a better life for that even a commoner can uh, participate in? Yes. This is actually, we are water scarce country. So we need to improve our water sources. So uh, we have rain sources as well, we have uh, melting of glaciers as well. We have two major sources of rainfall. So, harvestation of rainwater is very important. So, we throw it away in the sea. We should store it in dams. We should uh, construct more reservoirs. Because we get underground water for drinking. So, 
so there are no other sources of ground water except the water goes from the surface of the earth so seepage of water is very very important and if there is no water for seepage so we are losing our best source of drinking water that is ground water so we should construct underground water tanks government should government are doing this actually there is a there are some plans still in pipeline but government is planning to uh, construct water tanks around the cities at different places to store rain water so that our ground water uh, may be rejuvenated or refresh for us so we can get it with the help of tube wells we can get it with the help of wells as well similarly uh, sewerage lines should be improved government should improve sewerage lines and uh, the drinking water supply should also be improved the pipeline should be inserted the mixing of water should be avoided right assalam alaikum wa alaikum assalam can you tell me your name and your qualifications my name is dr nadia ahmed i have done mbbs and infill in an acne how can people lacking access to clean water minimize the risk of being diagnosed with water borne diseases yes we should first educate the people for maintaining good personal hygiene then we should tell them to boil the water for at least 1 minute before using or they can filter the water through a clean cloth or leave it in a ceramic bowl in direct sunlight before using also if available they can chlorinate the water which is going to kill most microorganisms before using it for drinking what are the challenges faced by doctors in the treatment of such diseases doctors face a lot of challenge in treating these waterborne diseases as their patients they present with a wide range of symptoms uh, you don't know whether the waterborne disease is caused by parasite virus or bacteria so uh, a very uh, elaborate history should be taken and a very accurate diagnosis should be made before treating the patients also because of the use of uh, over the counter antibiotics a uh, lot of microbes have developed resistance to these antibiotics and also if you treat uh, a certain case patient of waterborne disease and when that patient goes back to his uh, home environment and uses the same water then he can get reinfected with uh, the disease and he will time and again come back to the hospital with the same uh, uh, symptom so it is uh, most important to educate the patient uh, while treating him with medicines for these waterborne diseases Can you discuss some prominent researches in the improvement of treatment of these diseases? Yes, researchers are uh, developing new antimicrobial agents, antiviral agents and antiparasitic agents to combat these uh, pathogens causing waterborne diseases and also a point of use uh, water filtration technologies are being developed. Uh, which will enable the use the use of safe water which will be provided at household level also uh, the the water quality and surveillance is uh, now uh, actively being done and it is being provided uh, to for the detection of uh, waterborne pathogens uh, causing waterborne diseases and to and for early detection of these waterborne microbes and early detection of these waterborne uh, disease causing microbes will help in early intervention and early treatment of uh, such diseases our team also conducted a survey of around 40 people The survey that was previously displayed contained numerous statistics that proves the dire need for awareness for the causes and consequences along with prevention of waterborne diseases. Furthermore, it's another reason that urged us to start such an awareness campaign. In Pakistan, only 1% of the domestic and industrial wastewater receives treatment. For this purpose, to verify these statistics, our team visited a large-scale cotton textile industry to see how wastewater is released into the atmosphere. Firstly, 
preliminary treatment takes place in which large particles like bottles, pieces of cloth, thread are removed from the water. The further process with it can be carried out. After it, secondary waste treatment takes place in which dissolved organic matter are removed. This can cause great harm to the environment if they are discharged untreated. In secondary treatment, activated sludge process takes place in aeration tanks. In it, microorganisms break organic pollutant into simpler compound. Then calorification process is carried out in which treated water is separated from the sludge. After it, disinfection process takes place to remove any remaining pathogens by UV light or chlorination. Lastly, the tertiary waste treatment takes place in which the water is obtained from the secondary treatment and is passed through a carbon filter. It has high absorption capacity and chemicals are removed and the smell of water is also finished. Finally, it passes from sand filter which reduces the terribility and improves water clarity. After the treatment of wastewater, the biological oxygen dissolved drops to 30 mg per liter and chemical oxygen dissolved level gets 90 mg per liter. This BOD and COD level is not harmful for both environment and living beings. It can be drank but is preferred to perform ultrafiltration process one more time before drinking. भाई हम दरअसल आए हैं यहाँ पर आगाही देने और बताने के अभी जो बीमारियाँ हैं वो किस तरह फैलती हैं और उनके क्या नुकसान होते हैं इंसानों में बीमारियाँ जो फैलती हैं वो ज़्यादातर कॉलरा बुखार और क्या कहते हैं डिसेंट्री जैसी होती हैं अच्छा अब इन बीमारियों से आप बचने के लिए क्या कर सकते हैं आप क्या कहते हैं ना मुसलसल हाथ धोया करें साफ पानी लिया करें और जिधर आप अपना पानी रखते हैं ना उस जगह को कोशिश किया करें कि वो जगह साफ हो जहाँ पर आपका पानी हो अब आप बताएं कि आपको क्या कहते हैं साफ पानी यहाँ पर फ्राहम होता है हकूमत आपको करती है या नहीं करती आप बताए अच्छा कहते हैं आप पानी इस वक्त कहते हैं इस्तेमाल करते हैं जिधर से मिल जाता है उधर से लेके पी लेते हैं अच्छा पानी इधर कौन सा कौन सा हमारा घर है जिधर हमने मोटर लगवानी है ठीक है ना जैसे भी मिल जाता है पानी गुजारा कर लेते हैं कुछ बच्चे बीमार हो जाते बुखार हो जाता है कभी क्या हो जाता है परेशान है हम थोड़े से अच्छा ये क्या कहते हैं सैनिटाइजर्स हैं ये आप मुसलसल इस्तेमाल किया करें इनसे क्या कहते हैं आपके हाथ साफ रहा करेंगे और आपके क्या कहते हैं जिसम के अंदर क्या कहते हैं ना पानी वाली बीमारियां क्या कहते हैं नहीं हो How informative was this documentary to your knowledge about waterborne diseases? In my opinion, and this documentary was extremely informative as it informed us about a very important social issue, which was the importance of water uh, in our daily lives and how this can and completely destroy uh, our daily lives. Uh, it affected me personally very much as I did not have that much knowledge about waterborne diseases, so I I came to learn a lot about these these things. And it also all affected me greatly, and it moved me to take certain steps, steps, steps to solve this issue. Okay, thank you. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ahmad Adil, and I'm from Deccan of Canal Side Boys Club, Bus Lahore. How informative was the documentary to your knowledge about waterborne diseases? In my opinion, this documentary was very informative and influential to those poor community of Pakistan who weren't able to get this awareness and campaign. They were drinking a lot of contaminated water, leading to so much. loss of life so moreover i also believe that the interview with the doctor was very important because it backed up all the claims and information given by the speaker to the documentary thank you as we conclude our journey through the depths of waterborne diseases it is evident that the challenges are vast but so are the solutions while the toll of these illnesses on communities worldwide is undeniable there is hope on the horizon the key to preventing waterborne diseases lies in collective action and comprehensive strategies Access to clean and safe drinking water must be prioritized alongside improved sanitation infrastructure and hygiene education. 
Communities must be empowered to take ownership of their water resources, implementing practices that safeguard against contamination and promote health and well-being. Investment in research and innovation is critical for developing new technologies and approaches to water treatment and disease surveillance. Additionally, strengthening healthcare systems to ensure timely diagnosis and treatment of waterborne illnesses is essential for saving lives and reducing the burden of these diseases. But beyond policies and technologies, it's the power of education and awareness that truly drives change. By fostering a culture of hygiene and environmental stewardship, we can create lasting impacts on health outcomes and community resilience. As we embark on this journey towards a world free from the grip of waterborne diseases, let us remember that each of us plays a vital role in shaping the future. Together, we can turn the tide and ensure a brighter, healthier tomorrow for generations to come. We hope that this documentary has increased your knowledge about water sanitation and waterborne diseases. Even if you haven't understood the slightest part about this documentary, we would consider it a success. Thank you for your time and patience.